In the next part of this video, we'll cover these basic computer programming concepts. All of these concepts are core foundational ideas you'll need to learn as you begin to do more computer programming. Now, one of the most basic and foundational ideas in computer programming are variables and comments. Variables are containers for representing values. For example, you see a variable here called map name that has been assigned the value my map. Comments are little notes that you make to yourself so that you understand the code and so that others can understand it after you. In this example, you see a comment that begins with the pound sign character and shown in red, indicating the data type. Now a little bit more on data types. Variables can be of a variety of different data types, such as a string or a number. And these are actually concepts you're probably familiar with, and I'll demonstrate in just a moment when we look at variables, comments, and data types in ArcGIS Pro. All right, so let me show you a little bit about variables and data types. Now, data types is something you're probably already familiar with, whether you know it or not, in terms of computer programming concepts. Data types are what you have in attribute tables. So for example, if I look at this attribute table of this feature class called Mafrock Buildings, and I click on to add a new layer, you can see here the different data types of these fields, right? So when you create a new field, and we'll do this later in the video when we do some other programming, we have to set a data type. Most of these are texts, some of them are doubles, some are geometries and so forth. It's the exact same idea with variable types. So with that in mind, let's just try creating a couple very simple variables and print them out to the command line. And I'll use the Python window for that. And I'm gonna pull the Python window out and make it float on its own here. And so one of the classic things in any computer programming language is to write a hello world. So my very first variable, I'll make it H-E-L-L-O. And I'll make this a string variable. So the name of the variable is hello world and it's gonna be equal to, or the assignment, and I'm gonna make it a string or using terminology from attribute tables, a text. And then when I hit enter, that variable hello world is now in memory. And then if I type a print statement, which is a built-in Python function, notice as I type he, it's starting to already fill in with my variable. And there it is, hello world. And if I hit enter, it'll fill the rest of the variable in. And then when I hit enter at the end of this statement, you should see the words hello space world printed out. And there you go. So that's a very simple start to computer programming, but that's what it's all based on. Variables, assignment of variables, and doing things with them. And just as a quick extension to that, with other data types, you also have integers. And if I want to print the result of that out, and so forth. So in that case, I added two integers together, variables called one and two, added them, put them in another variable called three, and then printed three out. So again, just a very simple introduction, but very powerful and important concepts that you use throughout any computer programming. Another really core foundation idea about computer programming are operators and the idea of string concatenation. So in this example, you see two string variables, hello and world, and then they're being combined or concatenated together 
using a plus sign, an open space, and the, another plus sign. And when they're printed out, they'll print out the word hello space world. Operators also are used in addition, subtraction, multiplication, and so forth. For example, in the bottom of this image, you see a variable called four that is equal to two plus two being added together. So let's take a look at these ideas in ArcGIS Pro as they're very common. Okay, let me show you a little bit now about using operators and string concatenation. And I think you'll find that string concatenation in particular is something that you'll use often in ArcGIS Pro. One good example to demonstrate the concept of string concatenation and operator are label class expressions. If you've never used those, what that means, I'm going to use the Mafrock streams as an example. If we take a quick look at its attribute table, you'll see that there's a attribute field or column called stream. And if I go and simply just turn the label on for that, it just puts the word stream out. Now, from that basis, you can do more things with what is displayed in the label. And so to do that, I'm going to right click and go to labeling properties. And as you saw earlier in the video, you can build little expressions using code to create custom labels. And this is something that's been in the Esri software for a long time. And you have your choice of languages to do it with, but because we're focused on Python, I'll select Python and I'll start over. The way it works is to create the label, you double click on the name of a field. So this means whatever value is in the field will show up in the label. And then I'll use the plus operator, which can be used for adding strings together or for numerical calculation. And then I'm going to put a string in and I'll say, put the name of where this is. And so you have a very simple but powerful idea of taking the value of an attribute field and then combining it with whatever string you want. And you always want to click the verify button to make sure it works so far. So good. And then apply. And if you look now, my label has the value of the field. And in this case, they're all actually just called stream because um, this is how the open street map data this comes from puts it together and then refract. Now, if we look, we also have other attribute fields that we could combine together. So in some case where it says tunnel culvert, we could use string concatenation again. So in this case, whatever the value of waterway tunnel, and then the word mafrak, and I might, for example, put a space between those values to build a little bit more of a complicated legend. And you can see here, because this one does have the word culvert, stream culvert, mafrak. Now, later in the video, I'll show you about what are called conditional statements, where you can first take a look at what the value of something is or is not to determine if the value is displayed. And real quick, just to show you if you make a little error, for example, let's say, for example, I forget to put a plus sign in there, and then I hit to verify you'll see that I get red text in an error, invalid syntax. Now this will take a little experience to try to figure out what exactly happened here, but just remember with your operators to have them in there. So attribute field plus a blank space plus another attribute field plus another string and I hit verify and it's all good. Now let me show you another quick example of using an operator in the field calculator. If I go to this attribute table, this is for the buildings.
And in this example, I have a few buildings and I have a hypothetical scenario of their height. And I'm sort of pretending that this is the height of the building in metric, in meters. And let's say I want to then convert that value from metric to English units. And that's a simple calculation. And let's show you how you can do that. So in this example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new field. And I'm going to call it H underscore ENG for the height in English, English units that is. And just like we learned earlier in the video, we'll use a data type. We'll make it a float. And by default, because it's a numerical data field, it'll come out of zero. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to that new field, right click, do calculate field. And now I'm going to use a multiplication operator. And this is a very common thing you do with field calculator, again, using Python. Now, again, in this case, you've only got two languages. I'm going to use Python because that's what I want to learn about in general. And I'm going to set it where the value of the H underscore EN or height English is going to be equal to whatever the value of height. And here comes my operator. I'm going to use star for multiplication and I'm going to multiply it by 3.28 because there's 3.28 feet to a meter. So what it's going to do, it's going to go through every value and multiply that by 3.28. Now with this data set, it might not always work because of zeros and so forth, but I think you'll get the general idea here. So when I hit the apply button, well, actually I can do, um, I can verify this as well. Just like with the label class, it's always good to do a, a verify. Now I'll hit apply. And you can see, because I used the multiplication operator, and my value 3.28, 4 times 3.28, 3 times 3.28, and so forth. And I now have these values that have been automatically calculated. So those are examples of basic uses of operators and string concatenation. But I think you'll find that if you master even those most basic concepts, you'll wind up using them quite a lot and they'll give you a good starting point to learning about more advanced concepts in computer programming in general that I'll talk about next.